Hey everybody, Lucas here. And if you're a GCDer like me, then the weekly review is one of the most important moments of the week. Because that's the moment where you put yourself back together after the mess that life has put you through over the past week. You reflect on all your actions, engagements, projects, and so on and so forth. But it is also really important to have an easy way to do the weekly review, because otherwise you might skip them once, twice, three times, and before you know it, your life is all chaos again. So <laughs> that's what we want to avoid, and that's why in this video I'll be sharing with you my template that I follow every week to structure my reviews, and stick until the end of the video to find out how you can copy and paste and customize that template for your own use. Let's get started. So now we've got Todoist here in front of us and we're gonna find the weekly review template. Where do we actually have it live inside of the system? That's actually gonna be a project. So that's kind of a misnomer, but that's just the taxonomy that Todoist has and that you'll have to learn to live with if you use this tool. But obviously you can also take the template we're about to look at and hopefully get inspired to make one of your own for your tool of choice, which I'm sure will have a similar functionality as well. In this case, I already created it. I'm opening up my projects list, which has all kinds of different areas of focus in there as well. But we're just going to navigate to this particular project, quote unquote, and we'll see that it has the title already and the date as a placeholder, which we're going to add. So, you know, you just put in the day and there uh, you will have the title available for referencing later on. How that works, I'll show you in just a moment. So what you can see here right off the bat is that I'm using the uh, sections functionality that Todoist offers. Uh, you can do that both from within the list view, which we're having in front of us right now, as well as the board view, which actually makes them look like this. So there's plenty of items here, and I personally prefer this particular uh, kind of uh, review to happen from the list view, but you have both options. It's not going to affect the content of the file. And what are these sections? So first of all, it's about preparing the body and the mind for the weekly review you're about to conduct. Now, that's a bit of a broad statement, and it is a very subjective statement as well. So whatever you need to do to get yourself in the right headspace to buckle down for an hour or two to conduct the weekly review, that's what you'll want to put in here. So for me, it's pretty simple. For kind of body maintenance, if you will, I take supplements that I need to take once a week. I move my body, even if that's just a few push-ups or whatever it is for you, that just helps to kick things into gear physically as well. And I meditate, which is a fantastic way to clear your mind or I suppose just achieve a state of calm and focus. That's what it does for me at least. And I invite you all to also research and practice that as well. Now, whatever else you might want to add to this, you can just do so by adding it as a task without any further tags or anything. And you can just add it like this. And now it will be visible under the particular section here, right? And once you've completed any of the items, you can just mark them done so you can visibly kind of see your progress for this weekly review. And if you want to see it more clearly, you can actually show the completed tasks here. And there we go. Now, the idea is that you kind of jump from section to section and you don't just do whatever you want, uh, you know, back and forth. Uh, this is how I've designed it for myself. But like I said, you can apply your own sense of structure. But having a structure, I've learned, is pretty important. The next one is to clear your digital inboxes. We all have many of them. I, I've added some in here that I actually don't have, but most of you probably do, like Instagram or Twitter, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger. You know, take every single inbox that comes to mind that you can clear digitally and easily and add it to here. And if you're unsure what kind of inboxes you have, I've created a video on 10 inboxes you may not be aware of that you have. So you will find that somewhere uh, in this video appearing right now and you can click it to watch now or later. Anyway, that's where you have all these and you clear them and you uh, process them as needed. Same goes for your physical inboxes, which might require you to kind of get up out of your 
chair and move to a particular place like your physical in tray, your physical mailbox. And I've also added the chair, quote unquote, here. Many of us have that as well. And I am sure that many of you will also know exactly what I mean with the chair. It's the place where you just dump all of your clothes that may need to be washed or maybe you want to wear them again or you're just not sure. And over time, it just collects a lot of uh, yeah, materials, let's put it that way. So a great opportunity to also clear that quote unquote inbox and process that as needed. So you kind of clean your house while you're at it. Why not? The next stage is really the core review. The if, if you have no time for anything else, at least do this, because this is really what the book in GCD, Getting Things Done, also talks about, right? Processing everything in your inbox, and in this case, I'm talking about the task manager inbox specifically, and it might well be that some of the items that were first living in these inboxes that you've kind of transferred them over to the task manager inbox, uh, but uh, either way, uh, once you've arrived at this stage of the review, you process them into their appropriate place. Same goes for next actions, projects, waiting for agendas, some they may be items. And it all, uh, most of them have kind of these instructions or questions associated with them to trigger you to think about them in the right way, right? For example, for the someday maybe list, what you're trying to establish here is whether there's something in there that's while it wasn't relevant in the past, may be relevant now. And if yes, process it as such by creating a new project or action or whatever it is out of that that you will action on soon as a next action. Calendar is also part of this. Now, that's the core behind us here. And what I like to do after that is kind of do some more cleanup, which isn't as demanding mentally, but still important to do over time to avoid clutter. And it just feels really good to kind of have a fresh start that way, especially if you're kind of a power user of digital devices for work like myself. That's why, for example, in my case, I have clean up my personal cloud drive with Google in my case, but also my work cloud drive. You know, remove any files in there that you don't need anymore or put them in a different place. Just make it all look, you know, organized again. And you can see a few other examples of that too. But again, if you have any particular use cases for yourself, just remove what's not relevant or and add what is. It's that simple. Finances is something that you also need to keep a close eye on unless you're rich as uh, rich as f But uh, most, for most of us, it's pretty important to do this with some regularity. So in my case, I wanna check whether I have any incoming funds that I need to process any payments received or payments need to be made, check how my investment portfolio is developing and update my budget uh, to take into account any new expenses made. So a few examples of how you can also implement the kind of personal finance in here. And lastly, just two questions to reflect on the week. What went well and what am I gonna focus on next week? Now, this is something you can do by adding it into the description or into the comments. Both work, it really doesn't matter. You can just write it here, add the comments, and now it will permanently live there with a timestamp, so that's really convenient, so you can look back on it that way. And once you've done all that, you should feel, you know, well rested and uh, ready for a new week. But you don't wanna have this item live here forever, but you also don't wanna just lose it, right? That's why at the end, what I always do is I go to these options here and I archive the project as such. This will make it retrievable if I need it, but most of the time uh, you just wanna have it out of sight from your active list here in projects, right? So just press the archive button and now it is no longer there, which is exactly what we wanted. And that concludes the walkthrough of my weekly review template inside of Todoist, which is my tool of choice. Now, if you wanna try this out for yourself, you can either create a new project, create your own sections, and add the supporting tasks under it to guide your weekly review. But if you wanna start off a bit more easy, you can also follow the link in the description to download the templates and use it within your Todoist account. Now, again, if you don't have to do this, that's not going to work. 
but that's not a big issue. Just watch the video, pause it as needed to use it with your task manager of choice and create the template for yourself accordingly. Lastly, the sections are there, so you can also take a break in between if needed, right? You don't have to power through the whole review in one go. Although I do recommend that, it's just good to at some point get into this flow state, but it's no problem if you wanna just pause from time to time. And the sections I think really allow you to do that because you can really mark a certain part of the review complete before you move on to the next. So try it out and let me know in the comments how you structure a weekly review. I'm really curious to hear from other GTDers how you do it and others can learn from that as well. So that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. See you.